Um, Andrew Blair White and Josh have just uploaded another anti-post insight video. So I don't know if I'll link it up there, but go and have a look at their page. You're all subscribed to that, I guess, anyway. But they put a couple of selections up and who would have thought it? Gigginstown Town were supposed to be getting out of the game, weren't they? And we've got two Gigginstown Town horses have been put up. Scarlet and Dove was put up by Andrew for the Mayor's Chase. I mean, puts forward a, a fairly solid case, to be fair with you. Not a race that I'd be too excited in getting involved in, but I think he was saying she's about a 12 to 1 poke. Um, obviously, not too far beaten in the race last year. Did go and win at Punchers Town, as he was saying, the fact that he. She's potentially more progressive than Ellie May might be. She's going to probably start in the same race, takes time to go on with it as well. So the only thing I'd say with that is the fact that she takes time to get on with things. Maybe the price could hold up for a little bit longer. It, you know, who knows? It could like dip out a tiny bit. But you're taking a risk because if she does progress through the season and she does need her runs and comes out and does a good thing, then you could see the price crumbling. So can't really... I don't want to pick too many holes in that one. Now on to Josh. I mean, he's going to know that this is going to be one that is going to sway things with people and I, I I do feel sorry for the fact that in putting up these anti-post selections if you fancy something at a point in time the price is the price then when if if it's back off the back of information or your thoughts or people are seeing the same thing it's entries all those sort of things the prices are going to start to tumble and I know as a like a person that likes to put my my opinion out there it's difficult even for me to try and do it quick unless you go live to put things out there and you want to put a well-balanced argument towards it as well so the price of the one that Josh has put up has significantly changed, probably since when he fancied it, probably since when he delved into the horse a bit more, and probably since the video. But King of Kingsfield, he's put up a Gigginstown horse in the bumper. So first thing we'll just rattle off, which Josh does address. Um, Gigginstown have never won the champion bumper. In fact, Gigginstown have never had a placed horse in the champion bumper. Now, I talk about this loads with Gigginstown two milers, especially when it comes to things like the Supreme for the Arcor. And I know they've had horses that have been there or thereabouts, but Gigginstown do not, in my mind, buy two milers. And I know a bumper winner is potentially a horse that's going to go and stay further in time, but I think that would allude for me as to why Gigginstown may be, not saying they're not so fussed about the bumpers, but they're all about three mile chases, aren't they? So for further down the line, it would be very similar, I would say, in terms of training for someone like a Paul Nichols that they're not really so fussed about bumpers. They might run them in there for experience and stuff, but they're, they they know they potentially want to leave a lot to work on with the horses. Um, just on the Gigginstown stuff, they have had a couple of Punchestown bumper winners, but Blow by Blow was one, and I, uh, I think I can see it on here. Love the Higher Law was the other one, but both of those were under Willie Mullins training at the time they did it. So just to address the elephant in the room that is Gigginstown and bumper horses. Now, this King of Kingsfield... I did see when Josh put the tweet up on Twitter um, to say, see if you can pick his bet and get a £20 free bet, which is a decent thing to do. Um, I saw some people putting names in there and I felt like, quickly I'll just skim on onto Checker as well, I, I felt like it might have been better days ahead that lots of people were putting up as well in other places. thought it might have been that one. Then I saw some people mention King of Kingsfield and I just left it to see what was being put up. But since I have seen the selections got up there, King of Kingsfield is... From a like basically a flat side, he's a new breed in size, so we don't know exactly where he's going to be. But the dam side is flat as well, so this is all potentially irrelevant because we know like Tiger Roll was a flatbred. But the, I, I tend to look at breeding quite a bit, and it's a new sire. When you go back down the dam line, there's just lots of flat horses in there. There's potential two milers, all those sorts of things in there, but no, nothing of any real substance unless you go way back to like the 90s, I guess. Obviously, this horse has dotted up in a point to point and it's achieved a racing post rate of 95 on that point to point. So, some of the Gordon Elliott horses more recently, um, like American Mike and uh, Envoy Alan, would have been 94, I think. Um, Bob Ollinger was maybe 90. Two, maybe 94. Sam Crow, I think, was 92, 94 when he beat Elegant Escape. But basically, if you get plus 90, like mid 90s racing place rating for a point to point, like categorically, you should be a pretty useful horse. The race that he won, a um, couple of fallers in there, but none of them were in contention. Like he's won it very, very comfortably. So picking horses in behind is a, a risky business to do. But a couple of horses that fell um, ha haven't done a lot since. Um, one hasn't run. And then the other one, I believe, just double checking to make sure I get it right, pulled up after when never in contention. So by the by. And that's what they sort of made up the market as well. They were like single figure priced horses. Banny Mackey that was in second was beating a distance, a uh, good distance, 30 plus lengths. Potentially with that it being a distance, they put 30 plus. We don't know just how far back it is. We can go back and watch the point video. But that horse ran after um, and was beaten 37 lengths after having its first run. So 
again, not to say it's always the way that it works out of those lines of form, but it, it doesn't it doesn't potentially look the strongest bumper form. It's not as if we've got repeat winners after all. We've got lots of decent horses in behind, but it is a decent official rate or racing post rating of 95. So that's that's fine. I can see the horse is potentially going to be a nice prospect. And of course, it'd be one to keep an eye on. My like annoyance with this, annoyance is probably a strong word, but it's, and I get it. Like I say, prices will change things like that. But taking a swing and a flyer in a champion bumper can pay dividends. Like we saw Fasal Vega, Josh tweeted about that when Willie Mullins mentioned a, a dinner, the unnamed horse. Um, I don't know if people were backing back then, but people were backing horses at big prices. I know people got an American mic at the beginning of the season, but for me... Um, the bumper's always been a race where, yes, you might get these whispers, you might want to get a few on your team sheet, but that's the way that I'd rather play it. I would rather be looking at getting a few on my team sheet because these rumours, these hype, all these things can can prove different. And of course, he mentioned as well that Better Days Ahead wasn't really fancied in his point to point, whereas this horse was. And then he says the fact that King of Kingsfield is working a better horse than be uh, Better Days Ahead or Better Times Ahead um, at home. But again, workhorse and what it does on the race course can potentially be two different things. So all, all I'm saying with this horse is he's going out in a bumper on Saturday. Um, look, when you look at the depth of the race, there is actually, um, a, a, it's an okay race to be honest with you because you've got Willie Mullins has got a horse in there. Again, I'm just flicking through racing posts and doing this to make sure I get it right. Honky Tonk, who is um, well-owned. It's with um, John Magnia and that's from the family of Arctic Fire as well. So the mum is the sister of Arctic Fire, I think, and the size walk in the park. So, like it's a beautifully bred horse and again not to say that that's going to make him a million times better and we know that Willie Mullins maybe doesn't train uh, target down road as much as a Gordon Elliott would but it's an okay race uh, uh, Martin's got a horse in their Golden Star that's uh, a half brother to Golden Spear so an, an okay one again but this King of Kingsfield right I'd, it's not it's not a given that it's going to go and win this race this bumper to, to, be, to begin with, but he, he may well do. And he may well be a relation to Arctic Fire. So that could be reasonable form that goes in there. The price perspective thing is all the thing that kills me on this one, because as I say, I'd want to get a few in my book and potentially I'd want to take advantage of cash outs and things like that when it comes into being able to play a handful of them. Because I talk about buying, buying like a, a slice of the pie when you get to these races. I've got no doubt last year, lots of people backed Fasal Vega, but I also would imagine most of the people that backed Fasal Vega also backed American Mike. They put themselves in a really strong position. This King of Kingsfield, again, with a whole Gigginstown relation to things, that's not doesn't have to be the sole reason to not do something, but there's enough air of caution that's in there. Josh has actually put this horse up at 12 to 1. It's already gone into 10s, 10.52, the price switched. So I'm sure a few people may have got on with William Hill, but it was with William Hill with the top prize. It's 10 to 1 genuinely everywhere else. Josh said in the video himself, he, he put him up at 12s, but he wouldn't back him at 10s. And he's obviously touched on the fact that he was 16s last night when he was looking. He was hoping that was going to hold up. Um, and it was probably 20s when he fancied him as well. So I'm sure Josh has got a slip, a, a ticket, a bigger price. That's where for me, again, it doesn't matter. It's, he's not telling everyone what to do. No one has to follow the information in, do they? But there he's advised it as a, a like a, I don't know, it was half a point, it was a point, or it was, a, it was an each way bet is what he suggested. That, for an anti-post perspective, like, it makes me feel sick because, like I say, for, for a race like this where you are borderline clutching and you're going on whispers and all those sorts of things, it, it, look, don't get me wrong, he's got the, the target race for, for Gordon Elliott. You can see where those horses have done after. I, I get all of those points in there, but... The Gigginstown thing, as much as they've never won at the bumper and we can excuse it because they've had runners, they've never had a placed horse at the bumper. And I think when you're coming to buying a book in terms of buying multiple horses for a race, I would much rather look at um, having a, like, say, for example, whatever your stakes are. I don't want to do points because it's a weird system to do within there. But let's just say, say I have, say I have £25 a bet on my anti-post bets, which is what I used to do. I'd have £25 on this. And I would have probably tried to get in at 20s because you keep an eye on there. But that's not Josh's fault. The price has gone. But I'd have 25 quid on this. If I wanted to back this, say, for example, 20s, 25 to 1 as a, a bit of a flyer, which is what I would typically do from this far out. I don't think I'd be getting too far stuck in on a 16s unless it was really something that I felt compelled with. Um, I'd have my 25 quid on. I'd want to back it with someone with cash out because then if he doesn't run so well, I want to get some of my money back because be on an end or if they're getting beat in a bumper, then they ain't winning the champion bumper. Um so I'd want, I, the cash out variance I'd like in there as well. And I'm not fussed about the place part of it either, to be honest with you, because I'd rather have, if you're doing like splitting your stake across the place and the win, obviously you're getting half of it to play with. But I want that leverage. I want to know that I'm backing something at a price because we're tipping these anti-posts because we think they're going to shorten, where I can use that leverage to, to work out for something better. So if we're saying it's a 10 to 1 poke now, it's got a 10% chance of winning the race. Obviously, 
I'm, a, I'm tipping up a one to ten shot in the fact that I'm saying it's going to get beat. I'm not saying it's going to get beat. I'm just saying why you should tread with caution to put these in your book because that's going to cost you 10% of the pie. It's £10 to get yourself your uh, single round 100% in there. Whereas if you were back in the horse at 20 to 1, which I know we can't, obviously that's only cost you 5%, which means you can get twice as many horses in the book potentially at those prices. But if this horse does go and run well and then does shorten up, there's going to be other bumper horses through this season that you're probably going to want to get in your book as well. And I, d I don't see where, where like back in a, a horse each way at 12 to 1 anti-post, considering this this probably isn't going to be the best bumper horse in Ireland. I mean, it might be the best bumper horse we've in Gordon Elliott. I, I don't know if that is the case. Um, but Willie Mullins is going to have some some horses. And I know this horse is going to go out and, and dot about and it's going to do some bits and it's probably going to be impressive, but there's going to come a point where it's going to get a proper challenge and I just feel like we're going to see some other horses in, in, in the interim as well. So my suggestion within this, and again, I don't want to be putting people off for winners, is I, I wouldn't be touching the horse at 12 to 1. I wouldn't be touching the horse at 10 to 1. I really, I, I, know it, I know it's really harsh because we can get excited about bumper horses before they've run and we can see some really good ex-pointers and all those sorts of things, but I'd want enough clout in there to bit more substance to the form to say if I wanted to be back in anything under say 25s or 20s for a bumper I know the anti-post bookies have shortened things up a bit more now than they used to but it's it's by the by really you still got to look, treat things as they are so look I'm, I wanted to get this video done before Saturday because I don't want to wait till after and be like oh look Captain Hindsight look even, even Andrew said after look he, Josh made a, a, a reasonable case for him um <laughs> He's saying as well that if he goes and wins by a few lengths in this bumper, he's probably going to halve in price. So they're talking about potentially this horse being six to one at the end of the weekend. That is vulgar if that did happen. And just because a horse could halve in price doesn't mean that the price that it currently is is really that much value. So like I say, Josh did say 12 to one is up like the bottomish point. He's put the each way bit in there because I don't know, I suspect maybe if he's got 20s or maybe even bigger, he might have done it each way himself. I wouldn't be an each way better when it comes to anti-post punting simply for the fact that I would rather back multiple horses. Um, but everyone's got their own way of doing things. And again, from a tipping perspective, like if you're putting it up on the show, you'd rather this horse came third at 12 to 1 and you got some of your point system back because that can make the difference between a profit and a loss. But I just wanted to put my piece in there. Um, don't worry if you missed the boat. Don't worry about all this FOMO, all these bits and pieces, because that's where I borderline feel a little bit like in here, um, where I'd, I'd be different about it. Like if the price has gone on something, I, I, I don't want I don't want to back it anymore. And I wouldn't want to advise other people to back it just for the fact of getting it on the team sheet. Like it's not important enough for me to be right that I have to have the horse named in there and, and things like that. And like I said, I, I do empathise with Josh, the fact that he's, he, he has got this horse probably at a bigger price and he has that's when he wants to tip it up to you guys and let you guys know. Um, but, yeah, it is what it is. And that's why I wanted to, I'd rather do these things because I know people are going to start adding this horse to their book. And again, I don't want this video to be a case of, oh, now all of a sudden don't back it or don't do whatever it is. Please just have your own balanced argument within there. Do what feels comfortable with you. Do what, with what you know you're going to do to... to to make things pay and there's plenty of opportunities to get other ones in the book so look the long and the short of it is king and kingsfield for me is a vile price like i, th I think it's vulgar that a horse is 10 to 1 only post favorite for a bumper given it's not trained by willie mullins which would be a massive plus uh, i know gordon's won it a couple of times isn't he but let's be let's be honest willie mullins is the bumper king We've also got Giggins Town, which with their relation and types of horses that they're buying. Now, to caveat that, like I say, they want these three mile chases, don't they? But this is potentially like flattish bread. But he's done what he's done in a point to point. That's where they bought him from. They haven't bought him for anything else. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll have to we'll have to see. I just I just think the price is a, like vile, to be honest with you. So um, wouldn't be getting in there. Um, so yeah, just wanted to put that in there. I've definitely waffled too long on this one, so I'm going to keep this separate from the uh, weekend stuff because just I don't want to bore people. But um, there will be a weekend video coming up for Saturday and Sunday. I'll be posting that Friday, so I'm going to get this out now. And uh, yeah, this isn't to pick holes in anyone as a personal thing or anything like that. Like I say, jo Josh is doing what he's doing. He's, he fancied the horse, and like I say, probably at a bigger price. And he's just putting it on the map because it's running this weekend to get people's radar. That's exactly the way that it should be. You want to have things on people's radars. I personally just think he's a shocking price that he is now. Even if he goes and wins at the weekend and dots up by miles, potentially if he goes down to six to one, I still wouldn't say that, he, oh, I'm, I was wrong and he should have been a bigger price. I'm going to be stubborn in my position. And it would be the same way around as well, I suppose, if he goes and gets beat by Willie Munnings' horse at the, at the weekend or doesn't win that impressively. I think Josh would probably defend his position but I would think he would more defend it at the point when it was the 20s or the 16s, what he was thinking about, as opposed to the 10s or 12s. But 
we'll argue about price point for the rest of our lives, won't we? Anyway, I'm wrapping it up there because I said I was going to wrap it up. And uh, if there's anyone else's tips or anything you want me to have a look at, I do, I've been watching lots of them. And, uh, up in the ante's back next week, so I'm going to try and get one done next week or the week after with a bit of a review of the stuff that's going on. We've got Cheltenham November meeting coming up as well, so there's loads of stuff coming out. Um, so I'm sorry I haven't committed to doing this for the every Monday. There's just too many tips going out at the minute. We've picked, uh, not to be rude, but from um, a lot of sources where I don't think the clout or the judgment's there in terms of a real anti-post backing or following. I don't think there are too many people that are rushing off the back of some other people's videos. But I will review as many people as I can. Like I say, let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and I will see you tomorrow.